All right, welcome back to another tutorial in Maya. Today, I want to show you how to create some simple fog. Okay, and as you can see, this is just a nice kind of swirling, vaporous kind of fog that's enshrouding this, this car model. Okay, so the scene isn't really all that complex, and we're getting a pretty nice look with this, this fog. And I want to show you sort of the method of how I animated this fog first and kind of give you a scene breakdown so we can uh, start from scratch and make our own fog. Okay, so let's just pause there. Let's go in Maya. Um, here it is in Maya. And you can see where I have this 3D fluid container that is just rotating on the Y axis around in a circle. So pretty simple. No big deal. Just have about 300 frames and a keyframe at zero there and I think I rotated this um, this fluid container about 90 degrees on the y-axis okay so there it is now let's stop that for a moment and I want to sort of show you uh, exactly what the render looks like and right here you can see where we have a nice kind of fog that's kind of vaporous and it kind of adds you know some atmosphere to the overall scene so that's kind of what we're up to here. But remember that fog, there's a lot of different ways to do this. Um, so this is just one method that I find to be really fast and easy and, and gives great results every time. So there you go. So there's other tutorials out there on fog that might use the, the party, um, you know, node or just, you know, volume fog or something like that. And a lot of times what will happen there is you get some flickering and some weird stuff that happens. So this is real controllable and we're going to take a look at how to do that. Now, over the years, um, you know, this guy right here, Eric Keller, um, he's uh, my guru. <laughs> he wrote the books. A lot of times when you hear me talking about, you know, read a book, this is the one I'm talking about or these or all these. I don't know, you know. Um, he does some great work, uh, great documentation, and I refer to these all the time. So anyway, this fog method I sort of learned from Eric Keller. And if you go over to bluepatone at blogspot.com, um, you'll find some of his tutorials, a lot of his work. Um, you can see he likes uh, <laughs> insects and strange looking stuff and, uh, you know, creatures and, you know, just all around great imaginative guy, a master teacher, and we give a... A deep fried ectoplasm award um, for excellence in education to Eric Keller. All right, thanks, Eric. So let's get on with it. Let's take a look at how to create some 3D fluids. Now, let me start with this. As you can see in this render right here, I've set this at a base resolution of 20, and I'm getting about a 53 second render. So if you were to say set this down to the base resolution of 10, which it normally is by default, there, there's what it looks like at, at a frame or a, a resolution of 10. Okay, but notice the render time. This is a 33 second render, and that was at, at 10. And if I move that up to 20, I now have a 53 second render. So just be aware of that, that base resolution, you know, sort of has a lot to do with your, your render times. So be very careful there. I think you get the idea. Okay, so uh, let's move zoom out here in the scene a little bit. I have a plane down here for the car to sit on, and I just have a couple of lights. I just have like a couple of point lights and a, and a spotlight, so no big deal. You might want to create some of your own geometry, import a model, use anything you want, but um, it's best to have a couple of lights in the scene and, um, you know, just some geometry in there so we can kind of see what what's happening with everything. So at this point, I think what I'll do is just delete this fluid node right there. And um, there's my scene, real basic. Uh, I'll do a quick render on this car, just so we can kind of get a picture of where we're at now. And we'll go from there. All right, so here's the car uh, without the fog at all. And you can see where the lights are really warm. I uh, And they didn't look so much like that in the last render. I'll go ahead and save that one and let's see what it looks like without the fog. So there it is without or with the fog and here it is without. So you can see that it, the fog is going to definitely change the coloration of your, your car and everything. So you might want to set up lights, you know, before or after. I don't know, but just be aware that they can make a big difference when you start adding fog. Okay, and uh, there you go.
Okay, so let's create a fluid container, a 3D fluid container. Make sure you're in your dynamics menu set. Come over into your fluid effects and create 3D container. And right away, you'll see it pop up right there. And um, that's our fluid container. So let's enlarge this a little bit, but not use the scale. If you normally you might see it pop up and it's you want to scale from here, but you don't want to do that. What we want to do is we want to select the scaling from here because mental ray needs this for calculations and if the size isn't set accordingly here then it won't calculate properly sometimes um, so it's a good idea not to scale from here because you can see that didn't change anything over here at all all right so i'm going to go command z that so i'm i'll set this at like say 100 by say like 30 by 100 and we'll see how well that works um, you can also move it, uh, you just, just scaling you don't want to mess with there. So we could move this up just a little bit over the top of the grid there. And here is our 3D fluid container. Okay, And remember that once you get some fog and a texture you like, you can also animate it to come kind of straight up. So if it was like fog rising from the deep or something like that, you could you know, animate it like maybe bring it up like that and maybe twist it around a little bit. And usually I, I like this method of moving the fog as a whole rather than animating the texture because sometimes you can get some really funky looking stuff when you animate the texture and it just sort of doesn't look right. You know, it looks like it's bubbling or boiling or something like that. But we'll, I'll show you that in a minute here. Okay, so now that we have our, our texture in there, our, our 3D fluid, let's uh, mess with the properties of it. Um, set your base resolution to 10, and we're going to switch this up from dynamic grid right here to gradient. Okay, and right away you'll, you'll get that. If you don't see a white right there, press 6 on your keyboard and you should go into shaded mode. So there's our fog. All right, and we're also going to set this density gradient to Y. Okay, let's set it to Y. And on, as far as the display goes, we can get a little bit better look on our fog through the viewport here. Just, just for display purposes, we'll raise this up for like to like 12 voxels. All right, I think that's the max. And um, pretty much look at the density. Our, our, our default scale is at 500. So you can bring this up or down, but for the moment, I'm going to leave our overall density scale at 0.5. And we'll just leave that as a default. All right. The only other thing you need to really worry about down here is the, the, the transparency level. If I bring this up, you'll notice that it falls off toward the, toward the bottom. There it is, a little bit more up there. So right now it's just white. Our color of our fog is just white. But we could set a ramp in here and sort of you know make up some other colors. I think I'll just do an extreme for the moment. I'm going to set this one at a, at a deep black and I'll set this color at say maybe like a purple or something. And we'll set this one at something like say maybe a yellow or an orange. And this is just to kind of illustrate uh, what's happening with these these colors and, and, and the fog itself. So I'm just going to choose an extreme ramp right there. Well there's my ramp and here's all my colors but they're not available yet because we want to switch this up from a constant Okay, right now it's just constantly at the blue because it's sort of recognizing, you know, this at the top level. So what we want to do is switch this up to the Y gradient as well. And when we do that, there's our, our nice fog in its different colors. Okay, and I don't really need to do a render on this yet because we want to switch it up a little bit more. So right now it's just fog and it's solid. And we really want to have it, you know, have some opacity first of all. So if you just set a couple of clicks in here on this line, you can vary uh, some of the, the, the levels of opacity in here depending on where your gradient is set up here. So remember, those work in tandem. You know, you can, you can switch your colors up over here, uh, you know, just depending on what you're doing. And then you can switch your opacity levels of those colors down here in, in your opacity. Okay. So right now, I think I'll just kind of leave it like that. Let's sort of see if we can get all of the colors in there. Oh, temperature and incandescence you don't need to worry about. So let's set it up to something kind of like that for the moment. Now, the only other thing you need to do in order to get all of this working is let's just click on the texture color and let's click on texture opacity. And now you can see where it's doing something a little bit different. Okay, we have some 
um, we have some variation in that fog and um, that's being caused by that texture that we added so let's come in here and just for kicks and grins um, I can tell that this is going to be very yeah, it's very purple so if that's if this were to be my render I might want to maybe just take that purple off for the moment I'm going to take this one off and I'm going to sort of set another ramp so I'll set a mid gray right there or actually let's let's stay with black at the bottom I like to have a black point in there somewhere and then click in the middle here and we'll set this to kind of a kind of a middle gray and then we'll use this up here for our colors so I can kind of set that there maybe switch this up to a bluish maybe move this one over a little bit I don't know I'm just working with sort of a, a bluish gray kind of color all right and there it is so let's take a look at what our fog looks like you're not really going to be able to tell what's happening with your fog in the viewport right here so the best way to do this is always do a quick render all right and this one needs quite a bit of work so let's take that one by one right here it's it's really blown out so I can tell that's probably a transparency issue so I may want to adjust my transparency overall maybe bring that up quite a bit I might want to come over into this um, Y gradient and sort of see what's what's going on there if I bring it up or down I think I'll probably just bring it down to that level and then I think I'll sort of set my opacity levels down a little bit more here and we'll get a little bit more opacity in there and we'll do another quick render and just by doing those adjustments should give us a better look okay so that looks a little bit better but I still see problems it's still too bright I have some weird banding going on in here and um, yeah it's just a little blown out overall so I may want to bring my my uh, my uh, opacity levels down just a little bit more I may want to take my transparency level up just a little bit more I might want to bring this a little more into this range to get a little bit more pickup in this color and um, in this case I might want to now take a look at sort of the texture overall and take a look at kind of some various things that we have going on here right here is the overall texture gain and we're using the Perlin noise um, a lot of times this Perlin noise will give you this kind of weird blotchy kind of look and I don't know it, it just isn't really good to use sometimes um, but you be the judge you got all these choices down here you can switch it up to so I'm gonna try the billow for the moment and switch that up to billow and I think I might bring this texture gain down just a little bit we'll bring it down to like 0.7 and, and maybe yeah, we'll leave that there for the moment. And we'll do another quick render with this new billow. Okay, so that was a fairly long render at about a minute. Okay, 59 seconds. And it looks a lot better. Uh, the billow looks a lot better. Okay, so let's take a look now at what we can do to sort of minimalize this a little bit more so it doesn't look quite as smoky. Um, we may want to look at the amplitude, um, sort of adjust your amplitude, maybe bring your amplitude down a little bit, maybe bring the ratio down a little bit. Um, you know, you, you have billow density. We could bring this billow density down just a little bit. Spottiness, we may want to take that down a little bit. Um, randomness uh, we could leave randomness at one it should be all right and um, yeah let's let's try and see what happened let's see what happened there I'm gonna bring this ratio down just a little bit more so some of these controls in here will really give you quite a bit different look so I'm going to do another quick render All right, well, that's looking a little better, but not quite what, what I want. So I'll keep working on this. I'll keep bringing this, um, say, amplitude down just a little bit. I think we'll bring that down to the middle there. And we'll take this ratio down a little bit more there. Uh, take the frequency ratio down a little bit. And um, if you start adding more depth, uh, max depth, it'll give you longer render times. So let's see. Let's take this billow density down just a little bit more. 
Actually, we'll, we'll do an extreme. And remember, you can test this all day long. Um, the best thing to do is sort of pick a low value, pick a high value, and, and do your testing one by one, you know, frame by frame. All right, so I can start it. I can see it shaping up, and um, you know it's just a matter of messing around with these controls to kind of smooth this out a little bit more. Um, right now, I'm noticing something as well that you'll get quite often with this kind of 3D fog, and that's this kind of you know dirtiness in the. Um, eh, it just sort of looks like a diagonal pattern across here. Um, there's various ways to control this. Um, a lot of it's with render settings. A lot of it's with your quality. Right now I'm at a 41 second render time, so I could look at my shading quality and take this quality up to say maybe a quality of 2. And then I can also switch this sample method. Right now it's adaptive jittered, and I think that's what this, this jittering is kind of there. So, you know, sometimes you might want to set this up to just say maybe adaptive, and we'll set, set this render interpolator to, um, to smooth, and maybe take another quick render and kind of compare it against what it did. Okay, so that's looking much better. And now it's a static fog as it is now. So you could animate the overall cube if you want to just take you select your fluid shape and just sort of twist this around or move it up or down, um, whatever you want to do, that's great. Or you could come down into the um, into some of these um, attributes down here, like say your texture time, for example, and you could sort of animate this to to work over time. You could sort of you know use this to drive that fog to move around a little bit. So all you'd have to do is just uh, set your keyframe at number one there, and do a right mouse click, set key, and then maybe move it to the very end of the animation. In this case, I got 300 frames and maybe just move that texture time over a little bit to like say 0.1 or whatever and set another key. Now the problem with this is that it does strange things and you don't even know what's going to really happen until render time. So if I were to start you know here uh, obviously I'll see it in the viewport a little bit here but I really don't have a very good idea of what that's actually doing. Um, and it's, it's very difficult to know and sometimes you might have to keep resetting this texture time to go less and less um, and you could write an expression for that but that's a tutorial for another day so anyway um, I'm getting kind of the look here I want now and you can see where you know by increasing that um, by changing up those um, those parameters right there for in the shading quality to adaptive and smooth um, and setting this quality up it looks quite a bit better and we we'll compare that against the last render time so there was 41 seconds with with all of this stuff going on and by doing that change now we've got 45 seconds so really not that much of a hit in order to get a little bit better quality so you can keep raising those up um, you know slowly because they will add to render time at some point and don't forget you can add you can add more resolution by bringing that up to 20 Okay, and just sort of take it from there. So anyway, I hope that uh, sort of teaches you a little bit about this fog effect. And, um, you know, go forth and play with that all day long, every day for a couple of days, and you'll get the hang of it pretty easy. <laughs> okay, hey, well, thanks for watching. And um, as always, uh, read a book. Uh, be a good person because the world likes good people. All right, and um, we'll see you for the next one. And thanks for watching.